Hey everyone, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So this is the new beginning of the new week of the new day. So today the session is going to be uh, focused on economy. We are going to discuss some things related to economy. Then we are also going to discuss some questions on agriculture as well. So let's begin this session, which is going to be very, very important for your upcoming examination, both from your general awareness as well as ESI point of view for both the phases, phase one as well as phase two. So let's begin this session. But before that, if you haven't subscribed, then do subscribe our channel and hit the bell notification. You can also join our telegram group where you will get free quizzes and also you will, uh, you can ask your queries on this channel as well. So here the very first question that we have is related to periodic labor force survey which is very relevant for your both phase 1 and phase 2. Phase 1 may general awareness and ESI may this can be asked and in phase 2 you can be asked this uh, about this PLFS in your ESI particularly. Okay. So, bohot hi attentive ke sunenge during this PLFS, during the entire PLFS that we are going to discuss, bohot attentive ke sunna hai. Zyada complex cheeze nahi liye maine, kyunki because the focus here is on phase one, okay? So, itna complex karne ki zarurat nahi hai, but just you need to be focused, okay? You need to be attentive. That is something that I want from you. Okay, so what is the unemployment rate in 2019 to 20 as per the latest PLFS, Periodic Labor Force Survey? So out of these options, the unemployment rate was 4.8%. Now what are the implications, whether it has fell, uh, whether it has fallen or it has risen? What are all the things that we need to understand from this PLFS that we are going to discuss next, but let's first know which organization releases the PLFS. So it is released by National Statistic Office under Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. So do remember this thing. The next point that you need to know about PLFS is that it is the third edition of this report. It is basically an annual edition, annual report published by this NSO beginning with 2017. So the first PLFS was published for this year. Then the second one was published for 18 to 19. Third one is right in front of us from 19 to 20. So all these, uh, both of these PLFS have been discussed by us in detail. PDFs are also available. But since the new one has come up, therefore these old PLFS surveys are not at all useful for your examination. So you can focus on this third one only, the latest PLFS. So now let's discuss the details of this PLFS survey. Okay, the time period is July 2019 to June 2020. So basically July to June is the period of assessment. The next point here is, we have already discussed this thing. What we haven't discussed till now is the committee which recommended to create this PLFS. So the committee was chaired by Amita Kundu. So remember this committee, Amita Kundu committee, which recommended PLFS to the central government. Okay. So this men's unemployment rate, this is why have I mentioned this here particularly. The reason behind this is that women's unemployment rate has fallen and everywhere if you search PLFS on Google, you will get a plethora of news articles stating the women's unemployment rate that has fallen down. So the spotlight is on women's unemployment rate. Nobody is talking about men's unemployment rate. So I felt really bad and I put it here. But that's not the reason precisely. The reason behind this is that men's unemployment rate is also very important. It can also be asked from you in your examination. So remember, it has also fallen down from 6% to 5.1% in 2019 to 20. One peculiar thing, or we can say one positive thing about this PLFS for 2019 to 20 is that all the unemployment rates have fallen down, whether it is in men's or is it in women's, unemployment rate has fallen down. Labor participation rate has increased, workforce participation rate has increased. So this is basically 
a positive survey we can say so it has given a positive outlook okay halaki us positivity pe mitti ka tel chhidak ke covid ne aag laga di hai because unemployment rate is rising because of the covid so let's see when the plfs for 2020 to 2021 will be released what will be the data but for the time being we have this table which is very important for all the aspirants be uh, whether you are appearing for banking pu whether you are appearing for rbs in nabard or upsc also these rates these figures are very important for you guys okay so this table is not only stating the facts for 2019 to 20 this is also comparing these figures these outcomes with the previous years Okay, so let's have a look at this. First is the overall unemployment rate, which has fallen down. So you can see when this survey started, the rate was six point one percent, and it has fallen down to four point eight percent. So this is a great achievement that we achieved in reducing the unemployment rate. Worker population rate or workforce participation rate. Okay. so it has also increased so you can see it was 34.7% in the first edition and it increased to 38.2% and in the meantime it increased to this and then to this labor force participation ratio it also increased from 36% to 40.1% percent, 40 if precisely acha in figures ko exact figures yaad rakhna bhi bahut zaruri hai you cannot re remember it in round figures you have to memorize it in the exact term because these are the national level level data about the employment market of india about the labor market of india next is women unemployment rate so it has also fallen down 5.7% 2017 18 5.1% 18 to 19 and then 4.2% so this is a great fall in the unemployment rate of women that 2019 to 20 uh, has seen and it is very much in the news so let's discuss some facts related to women labor force women labor force participation theek okay? hai so labor force participation improved because of the total employment generated in percent days in 2020 to 2021 under mg narega's women's share has increased to around 207 crore person days so this is a very objective data there is nothing much that we can put our brains to next is the mg narega wage rate was also increased to 202 a day earlier it was 182 so this is not a new fact we had already discussed this when the covid measures relief measures were announced by the government labor force participation rate for women has also increased from 24.5% to 30% in 2019 to 20 so again labor force participation rate is increasing and here the government's efforts are mentioned the because women per labor force participation in order to increase that the government has launched many initiatives many schemes as well and it is stated it is i you would say it is uh, mentioned in various articles that it is the fruit of the government's efforts that this result has come out in 2019 and partly it is true that because of various schemes that have been launched by the government of india that women labor force participation rate has increased okay so what the government has done it has increased the paid maternity leave from 12 weeks to 26 weeks so these measures are particularly for women okay mandatory crèche facility was also provided for, uh, in the establishments having 50 or more workers permitting women workers in the night shifts with adequate safety safety measures etc so these are the uh, various initiatives or we can say small steps towards increasing the women labor force participation now the schemes particularly the re uh, recent schemes that have been launched in order to increase the employment are important for example atmanirbhar rozgar yojana prime minister employment generation scheme 
epfo schemes so all these schemes are very important and these schemes we have already discussed in detail in our government schemes videos as well as we have provided to you in the pdf format as well so do cover all the latest uh, schemes related to employment thoroughly for both of your phases okay so that was all about the periodic labor force survey for 2019 to 20 and this is my, this is it that you have to cover for your phase 1 particularly moving on to the next question so i told you that we are going to discuss about economy today so this session is going to be focused on economy as well as agriculture so here again we have the second question related to economy which is forecasting the growth rate of the economy okay so what is the gdp forecast for india for fy22 as per imf's latest update so latest update is the latest release of world economic outlook report which was uh, which is the july update july 2021 update now according to this report the year 2022 fy 2022 is 2021 to 2022 the gdp forecast is 9.5% for fy 23 that is 2022 to 23 the forecast is 8.5% for india now let's have a look at the world gdp forecast so guys here you can see the year 2020 2021 2022 20, is mentioned so don't confuse it guys 2020 is for 2020 to 2021 this is 21 to 22 this is 22 to 23 okay so whenever in the international reports you see uh, you see years like these then you have to automatically understand this thing that they are take, uh, going to take a year ahead okay for them the financial year is from this to a year ahead for example 2020 to 2021 if the 2020 is mentioned here okay now let's see what is the global gdp forecast because these gdp forecast are not at all important for you to remember it is just for your understanding that how all the governments all the countries are failing to achieve a positive growth rate in the 2020 to 2021 how they are recovering in 2021 to 2022 and how they are struggling to uh, to stand on their feet in the year ahead okay you don't need to learn any of these gdp forecast they are not at all important for you okay what is important is this so the last year the forecast was or the growth rate was minus 3.2 the global output was minus 3.2 the current year is going to have a global uh, output of 6% the gdp would be 6% and the upcoming year the 2022 to 2023 the forecast is 4.9% okay and as far as india is concerned let's see india as well Minus seven point three percent. So as I have told you that since the government has given this data, so every agency is going to use this data only because from from now onwards, this data is the real output that we achieved in the last year. So this data was given by NSO. Minus seven point three percent. Twenty twenty one to twenty twenty two, nine point five percent and eight point five percent for the year ahead. Moving on to the next question. okay this question is related to agricultural exports and it is again a very important question for all the aspirants be it nabard rbi sebi okay you will get to know why i am saying this thing but first let's discuss this question the answer and then let's move on to the news so how much share does india hold in terms of agricultural exports in the world according to wto's latest data so if we look at the entire agricultural export market of the globe then out of that entire market india holds 3.1% share in terms of agricultural exports again a very important data particularly for nabard students okay 
दिस डेटा इसको तो घोट के पी जाना है डोंट फोगेट दिस थिंग बिकॉज थ्री पॉइंट वन परसेंट इज द टोटल शेयर दैट इंडिया कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टूवर्ड्स एग्रीकल्चरल एक्सपोर्ट मार्केट इन द ग्लोब ओके द नेक्स्ट थिंग इज दैट दिस डेटा इज लेटेस्ट एंड रिलीज बाई वर्ल्ड ट्रेड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ओके सो हियर माई क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम यू इज हु इज द chair uh, who is the director general of wto that you have to tell it is the first woman to head wto so tell me who is that person the name of that person now let's discuss the data so wto has released this data that we know european union is uh, is having the lion's share in terms of agricultural export of course it is going to have that share because this is not a single country european union is a combined group of 27 countries so uh, if you combine the agricultural exports of those 27 countries then obviously it is going to take the lion's share in the market so here it is the world's largest agricultural produce exporter with a share of 16.1% in 2019 remember guys 25 years duration is being assessed from 1995 to 2019 so what was the output what was the situation in 1995 and what is the situation in 2019 is being assessed so what is the present situation basically what is the situation in 2019 would be the present situation would be the latest situation so that is something we need to memorize us has 13.8% share brazil has 7.8% share and us is the second largest brazil is the third largest agricultural exporter india is the ninth largest agricultural exporter in the world so it has entered the top 10 agricultural exporting countries this is a very big achievement for india okay the share we have already discussed it is 3.1% next mexico acha usse pehle you need to know this thing that earlier new zealand was the ninth uh, largest agricultural exporter but now india has replaced new zealand and it has achieved this position mexico has also increased its share significantly to 3.4% and it replaced malaysia at the seventh position so mexico and india are the two countries that have gained a lot in agricultural export market therefore these two countries are mentioned okay all the other countries are not very important for you to know you just need to know the top 3 india as well as the other uh, major performer okay so this to we have already discussed now let's discuss major exports exporting products of india so rice is one such product in 1995 Thailand, India, and US were the top three exporters of rice. In 2019, India became the top exporter of rice. Again, a very important uh, fact here. So this reminds me to ask you about kala namak rice. ठीक है, kala namak rice is the species of which state of India? ठीक है, ये question RBI में पूछा गया था. Next question that I want to ask is golden rice. Which country has approved the commercial production of golden rice? This again we have already discussed recently. So these two questions are for you guys. You have to tell me in the comment section below. So in 2019, India is the top exporter of rice. Then Thailand, then Vietnam. So Vietnam replaced US here. And the top ten exporters, basically the top ten countries. account for more than 96% of the exports of rice both in 1995 and 2019 so that was another fact now let's have a look at other agricultural products of india cotton india is the third largest cotton exporter accounting for 7.6% of the egg, uh, cotton export market in the globe it is the fourth largest importer accounting for 10% in the agricultural not cotton import market theek hai so third largest exporter hai fourth largest importer hai in cotton soybean india accounts for 0.1% of the soybean market internationally and it is ninth ranked in the world so soybean ka export is already low in the global market 
where in india holds 0.1% share and ninth ranking next is meat in meat and edible meat offal category india has secured eighth rank in the world with a share of 4% india's share of foreign value added content in its agri exports clocked at 3.8% share primarily due to high tariffs on agri imports to boost the domestic markets and local farmers so basically this point is highlighting that foreign imports particularly in the field of agriculture have been restricted therefore the total value added content the value addition in agricultural exports has reduced to 3.8% so that was all about the data released by wto in relation to agricultural export market guys do remember the data and do answer the questions that i have asked you during the session till now okay which of the following objective is envisaged to be fulfilled by agri stack so now let's first discuss the options and the answer and then you will yourself get to know what this agri stack is so the first thing is increment in farmers income what is the objective of agri stack that is something we are going to discuss okay so the first option is that second is improvement in efficiency of agricultural sector third is effective government planning and coordination for increasing farmer income fourth is to create a digital ecosystem of agriculture and fifth is all of the above so here the right answer is option e all of the above so basically this agri stack is being developed by ministry of agriculture and it is basically developed to create a digital ecosystem of agriculture theek hai ek agriculture ko digital banana in, in order to collect data of agriculture and in order to improve the efficiency of agriculture sector this agri stack is being developed now why do we need to improve the efficiency of this agriculture sector to increase the farmers income to improve the farmers income to improve the productivity of agricultural sector okay and how is it going to be increased through effective government planning and coordination for in coordination for increasing farmers income so effective government planning and coordination how do we how do the governments will be able to the state governments and the central governments will be able to uh, effectively plan if they don't have the enough data if they don't have the enough mechanism or the platform to convey their uh, decisions so fast track mechanism is required at the moment in order to improve efficiency of the agriculture sector and that fast track mechanism or platform can only be provided through digital ecosystem that is why this agri stack is being developed so right now it is in the development stage and no private uh, player is being hired by the government to develop this agri stack platform okay the next thing here is that the ministry of agriculture is planning to create a national farmer database this is also a very important news guys although a direct question and objective question might not be made from this news but a descriptive question or you can also cite this uh, this initiative of the government in your descriptive answers if a question is on agriculture and technology is there in your descriptive paper in your esi or ard whatever okay next comes ha uh, this national farmer database so what the government is planning to do first that it is planning to create this database second that government is planning to record the farmers the data of farmers and how the government is going to record the data it is basically going to use the land records okay digitized land records so through those land records farmer will be recorded and if we have the data about the farmers only then we can provide them with the facilities with the government schemes okay the benefits of the government schemes if you don't have the data if you don't know how many farmers are in need then how can you provide them the benefit so that is why this database is going to be created is being planned by the ministry of agriculture okay i hope that you have understood it the next step that the ministry of agriculture is planning is ministry of agriculture in collaboration with ministry of electronics 
and information technology so these two ministries are planning to have a data policy for agriculture now i don't think that i need to explain why do they need data policy for agriculture because we have seen that they are going to create national farmer database they are creating this agri stack that is going to digitalize the ecosystem of agriculture ho sakta hai ki the direct benefit transfer or the government scheme trans benefits that are provided to the farmers will be provided through that agri stack channel abhi that is not final guys so don't take it as a final statement but that is my opinion that they are going to uh, use agri stack in that manner also so if we are using digital ecosystem then we need to protect our data so a data policy is also in the pipeline but remember all these things are in the planning stage only nothing has become concrete yet also this agri stack uh, is not yet developed it is being developed okay but it was important for you to know moving on to the next question which state has launched mission niryatak banu to promote aspiring exporters in the state pura session hi hamara economy pe based ho gaya because we are discussing economy we are discussing gdp we are discussing exports we are discussing agriculture sector so here is our next the last question of the day that is uh promoting exports in a state so a state government has launched this mission niryatak banu niryatak is exporter so become exporter is the english translation of this mission niryatak banu so rajasthan government has launched this mission in order to provide guidance support and everything the exporters and small scale businessmen need in order to become exporters theek okay? hai that is the uh, that is the whole news regarding this mission niryatak banu and here this session ends i hope that you have understood what i am going to what i have told you till now and do not forget to answer the questions that i have asked you in the session thank you so much for watching me and guys do not forget to watch me at 10 am when i am going to discuss the uh spotlight of april month at 10 am okay thank you so much